The film in which you are about to see is an account of the disaster in which befell a lone man trapped in a cave. France is known for some of the largest and most beautiful wine vineyards in all the world. And most of these vineyards come with some of the most elaborate ways of storing their wine in order to age it. With some of the more creative ones being in actual cave systems. Which now brings us to our story. Jean-Luc Jessois Verges was working as a medical caregiver and suffering from a severe bout of depression, even to the point that he was seriously contemplating his own life. The solution that he came up with to get out of this funk, you ask? Well, if you said go to the movies or hanging out with friends, then you haven't been paying attention at all to this channel. That's right. He went cave exploring, or spelunking. Only thing was though, he was going to do it with a little bit of a twist. So he planned to bring with him a bottle of whiskey and a pocket full of sleeping pills. And so on the faithful day of December 18th, 2004, he said goodbye to his 14 year old son and wife. He would then head up to a network of abandoned wine galleries and grottos located in the Madurain region near the Pyrenees Mountains. This cave system had been abandoned for years and had become once again overrun by nature. Once he got there, John Luke would drive his Land Rover into the large entrance of the cave. Half drunk and half out of it from the sleeping pills, he would then grab a flashlight that he had in his car, the rest of his pills and whiskey, and he headed into the dark. What John Luke had not realized though, was that this was no ordinary cave. Originally, a chalk mine, this cave comprises of at least five miles or eight kilometers of blind corridors, twisting passages, and a ton of dead ends. In other words, it was a perfect natural labyrinth. John Luke would then walk down one corridor, make a blind turn, then make another blind turn again. And as he was already half passing out from the drugs and liquor, his flashlight battery slowly started to dim out until eventually it died. Not wanting to just stop in the middle of a dark cave though, John Luke would continue walking. As he was walking though, he turned into a corridor that was entrenched with deep thick mud, and before he knew it, both of his shoes were ripped from his feet. Now shoeless, and in a cave so dark that he could barely see his own hand in front of his face, he would then cling to the cave wall and continue searching in vain for the exit. 34 days would pass, and on the day of January 21st, 2005, it would be that three local boys, home from school because of a local teacher's strike, would stumble upon John Luke's Land Rover, with the door still slightly open. The boys would, upon seeing this, immediately call the police. The police would then learn that John Luke's wife, Jano, called him in missing a few days after he left, stating that she only thought that he was going for a short walk. The police would then send in a 20-man retrieval team to get what they thought would most definitely be a dead body. After about 90 minutes of searching, the team went about 656 feet, or 200 meters, into the cave system when they were finally able to reach John Luke. But no one in the team was prepared at all to see what they would see next. John Luke was as pale as a ghost, as skinny as a skeleton, and had grown out his hair like a wild man, but he was still alive. How though? How can a man survive 35 entire days in a dark cave with no sunlight, water, or food? Well, the human body and spirit is more incredible when under distress than we once thought. In order to ensure that he wouldn't die from going thirsty, John Luke would drink the water off the cave walls and random puddles that he found. And in order to make sure he didn't starve to death, he would eat clay and old tree bark that he would find filling his way on the ground. In order to stave off hypothermia, he was lucky enough to find old tarps left behind by the previous farmers or chalk mine that he was able to wrap himself up in, especially whenever he fell asleep. And incredibly, in order to survive, his body reverted into a state of wildness, most likely that we received from our prehistoric ancestors. Essentially, in order to preserve energy caused by starvation, his entire bodily system slowed down to an almost crawl. His organs, hair, and nail growth almost slowed down completely. Even his cell reproduction slowed down to help preserve what little energy he actually had. And on top of that, in order not to go insane from the total sensory deprivation in which he was suffering through, he would then close his eyes and lose himself in thought, almost taking his mind completely from the situation at hand, 
although wasn't all peaceful as there were equally just as many times where he would feel utterly hopeless even to the point of fashioning a noose from a piece of old rope that he had found. John Luke's story is one of utter stupidity, luck beyond comprehension, and the evidence of just how enduring the human soul truly is. Let me know in the comments what you would have done in John Luke's position, that is, if you were crazy enough to actually be in his position. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and hit the notification bell for future content. Goodbye for now.